One thing I enjoy about learning is the feeling of discovery. The aha moment that happens when the pieces of a puzzle fall into place. True discovery doesn't happen in a vacuum. It requires the culmination of knowledge, an openness and appreciation for the interdependencies across the curriculum. Language arts, history, math, science, art, technology, all play a role. Even when what I'm focusing on is the chemistry of making a samurai sword. In the simplest of terms, the process goes something like this. Start with iron ore, add charcoal, really intense heat, make steel out of it, which you pound in shape, congrats, you've got yourself a sore. If you look further, however, you'll find much, much more to the story. The samurai sword is one of the greatest fighting weapons of all time. The craftsmanship involved in its creation dates back to 900 AD, although today industry mostly relies on the scientific method and quality control to reproduce consistently good results, the making of the samurai sword continues to be steeped in religious ritual. The sword of the ancient samurai was believed by many to contain his very soul. The ideal sword would be hard enough to hold a razor-sharp edge, flexible enough to sustain tremendous impact without breaking, and have a slight curve to the blade. Early swords were made of bronze, then iron. The Japanese made the samurai sword using steel. The key to its effectiveness? The precise mixture of metal, the heating cooling process, and its unique curve. In the making of steel, Iron and carbon combine at the atomic level. As the iron heats, its molecules change form and the space between its atoms increases. When it's cooled rapidly, carbon atoms are then trapped between the iron atoms, distorting the molecule. This distorted form, which we call steel, is much, much stronger. Tamahagene is the name for the special steel used to make the samurai sword. It is created from iron ore sand and charcoal within earthen smelting furnaces called tartaras. The temperature inside the tartara reaches upwards of 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. During the three days it typically takes to make tamahagane, the fire in the furnace is carefully attended to. Subtle chemistry changes can result in drastic adjustments to a metal's properties. Although today we can study the composition of metals using electron microscopes, in the making of tamahagane, master craftsmen continue to rely on their senses and a history of knowledge passed down from one generation to the next. The iron sand sinks to the bottom of the Tartarus, into what's traditionally called the bed of fire. When the mixture reaches a certain color, the master knows it is tamahagane. It is important to note that the tamahagane never completely liquefies, so the carbon distribution is not uniform. Some of the tamahagane will be harder, and some more flexible. This is important to the engineering of the samurai sword. The tamahagane will be reheated, pounded, and folded. This process changes the shape of the metal all the way to the atomic level, ridding it of impurities and strengthening the blade the harder steel is then bent into a U-shape, and the more flexible, low-carbon steel inserted into the core. 
thus producing the ideal mixture. In essence, the outside of the blade is hard and can retain an edge, while the core is flexible and able to absorb the shock that would otherwise shatter the blade. But for the final part of the forging process, a clay and charcoal powder mixture is painted onto the blade, allowing certain parts of the blade to cool faster than others while the sword is quenched. The sword is heated to exactly 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit and then immediately plunged into water to cool. This process locks the carbon in place. The low carbon steel, which is on the inside, contracts more easily than the high carbon steel and pulls on the outer shell of the edge. This is what gives the samurai sword its distinctive curve. The final stage of the sword crafting process is what gives the sword its legendary edge and can make or break the sword's value. Polishing the sword is a long process, taking about 10 days just for stage 1. A single polishing stone can cost $1,000 or more, and the finest of these stones is called a jizuya, which is often no larger than a grain of sand. During the final stages of the polishing process, the hamon which is a wavy line in the top of the blade, is revealed. It is a result of the clay that was placed on the blade immediately before it was quenched. Samurai swords can be sold for hundreds of thousands of dollars as antiques or art pieces. A single sword can take 15 people 16 months and requires a tremendous amount of knowledge to complete successfully.